All I want is more of you, more of you. I want more of your spirit, Lord, more of you. More of you, Lord, more of you. I want Hallelujah. more of the Lord. I want more of the Lord. Come on and bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on and bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you because you have blessed us and kept us. I pray, Father, that you will just use me as a vessel unto day. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, speak the word through me. I ask for your anointing that rest upon me. I ask that your glory be revealed in this place that I may speak your word with power in the name of Jesus. Save the sinner, deliver the bound, set the captives free. Any stronghold, Father, let that spirit of healing and deliverance just heal Heal the sin sickness. Heal the infirmity. Cast every demonic foe out in the name of Jesus. And Father, use me as a vessel. Let no flesh glory in your sight. We'll give, all, give you all the credit for what you will do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, tell your neighbor, God has a miracle for you today. And come on, clap your hand and bless the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and magnify him. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Take your seats, take your seats. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. To the book of Hebrews. Can I have your undivided attention? To the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter of Hebrews. Okay. And we're going to go to the 14th through the 16th verse. And then we're going to go to the fifth chapter of Hebrews 1 through 6. Are you ready for the word? The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And the fourth chapter of Hebrews 14 verse reads as follows. Then seeing, or seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That boldly there means come with confidence. That, that boldly means come with confidence. Say come with confidence. Now let's go to Hebrews 5. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself, 
to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. Come on, say this with me. Jesus Christ as our high priest. Say that again. Jesus Christ as our high priest. Are you all praying with me? <clears throat> Bible says in also in that fifth verse, so also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to himself, or to, who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So I, I start off with an obvious, an obvious uh, observation. Life is hard. Life is hard. Life brings surprises. Life is difficult. Life brings challenges. Things you were not expecting shows up. Financial worries, marital problems, rebellious children, children that grow up and trying to find out who they are, go into conflict with parents. Falling in love, and the one you love leaves you. Being a victim of theft. Being a victim of abuse. Some things that you brought on yourself. Some things that you are, you are in that you were an innocent bystander. Things just happened to me. Racism, ageism, life brings challenges, amen? And when I look in the Bible and read about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the number one reason that we got saved, or I got saved, the number one reason I stayed with Jesus is because that not only is he my savior and he died for me, that's why we got saved and the, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus uh, because of his blood that, that saved us. But, but a reason that I got saved is because Jesus understands me. He really understands you. He, he, is just, he was just not a man that came or God that came down as in a form of a man. He was fully man and fully God at the same time, a mystery that we will never really understand. He was all man and he was all God at the same time. But because he was all man, he understands me. You know, life threw me a curveball. Life threw you a curveball. My emotions got the best of me at times. I was saved, but I wanted to throw in the towel sometimes. And things were not looking smoothly. And uh, we, we felt we had reasons to leave God, but the encouraging thing was Jesus understood me. And it is because Jesus was and is my high priest. 
to the believer, Jesus is also your high priest. In short, or in layman's terms, Jesus understands what you are going through. Tell somebody, Jesus understands what you are going through. And even if you're not going through anything, Jesus understands what you're all about. He understands. Come on, say, Jesus understands. He absolutely understands every aspect of your life. Amen, church. There is not anything that you will go through in this life that Jesus did not feel or go through himself in this life because he was here on earth. And I believe many of us maybe don't look at Jesus as our high priest, and maybe if you called him that, maybe you really don't understand what a high priest really is. But the high priest in the history of Israel was very important. So let's look at the book of Hebrews to understand this revelation or this illumination of the word. Um, it is read, Hebrews, and referred to many times. It has that popular and familiar uh, chapter, the, the, as we say, the Hall of Fame of Faith. That's chapter 11. So, so we, we know that, and we know, you know, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The ever, you know, that's, that's very popular in the book of Hebrews. But Hebrews is very dependent on the Old Testament and the Old Covenant for much of what the author has to say to the Jewish Christians that receive this letter. The author uh, is unknown. Now, if you want to tell me Paul wrote it, I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm not going to agree with you because I don't know and you really don't know. And people have given evidence of of Paul, I, you know, the theology is interesting. Uh, sometimes men try to find answers when there's no answer. And it's okay to say you don't know. I mean, why do you gotta prove somebody wrote it? Is, it, is the words gonna change? <laughs> it's, 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 it's what it says and, and God meant, it, meant for this to be said and, and that's the reason why, but you know, men will be men. But anyway, we do know that the author had to be Jewish because it's a very Jewish book. It's a very uh, historical Jewish book that speaks to those Jews who accepted Christ. And what happened was they were considering going back to Judaism. They were being persecuted. Jesus had not come yet, and they were considering going back to uh, um, uh, Judaism. And this author does a good job to say, don't do it. He, he, he does a good job to say, don't do it because Jesus is better than the old way. And, and, and he reiterates it. Jesus is better than the old way. And he's saying, Jesus is worth living for what you're in. It's worth the persecution. So he tells them to keep going. I don't know if somebody might be considering backsliding. Just, just tell somebody around you, keep going with Jesus. Jesus is better. Jesus is better. So don't turn back, never give up. Stay with Jesus. And ironically, that's the same message to believers today. Don't give up on Jesus. Jesus in your life is better than not having Jesus in your life. I'll say that again. Jesus in your life is better than not having 
Jesus in your life. Can you all say that with me? Jesus in your life is better than not having Jesus in your life. So the author spends the majority of this letter talking about the superiority of Christ over the Old Testament sacrificial system. And one of the comparisons was how Jesus was a superior high priest. And if you don't understand anything else from this message, just take this home with you to understand Jesus is a superior high priest. Because you've heard the titles of Jesus. He is the Messiah, Savior, Son of God, Son of Man, Friend of Sinners, just a name of few. And each title for Jesus focuses on a particular characteristic of Jesus. You know, some people just have one name. Then some people have nickname. And every now and then I'll call my wife sweetie or sweetheart. And Kaylee was like, what's a sweetie? <laughs> so I have to explain what's a sweetie. And, and I said, well, only wives can be sweeties or husbands. And she was like, oh, okay. She said, grandma's your sweetie. I said, yeah, she's my sweetie. Grandma's my sweetie. That's it. But it, it reminds a person of a particular characteristic. Are, are you all still with me? So Israel's high priest. So, so, so what's the big deal about a high priest? Well, Israel's high priest, the, the, the word priest means one who mediates. But also it means one who is holy or set apart to do the task of a mediator. You know, preachers, we've got to get back to being a preacher that is set apart. Preachers shouldn't be seen doing everything. Preachers shouldn't be seen being and saying everything. If you're going to be a man of God, they, you shouldn't be one of the boys. Pastor, I want to talk to you man to man. Well, I'm not just a man. It got quiet in here. You know, when, 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 when you are saved and Christ is in you, you are not just a man or a woman. You represent Christ. Amen. So some things I should not be doing because you represent more than who you are. I tell my children every once in a while, you got a name, a last name attached to that first name. So, you know, you want to do what you want to do, you got my last name. You tell your children that, I don't care how you think you grown, you still got a last name and you didn't come here by artificial intelligence. AI didn't make you born. You, you, you came here by mom and dad. Now you might be acting a little artificial, <laughs> but, but, but you still came from mom and dad. And the parents said, amen. And I'll tell them that in a minute. I don't care who you are, you still got a last name. And you didn't get hit by yourself. So, so we represent Christ. And Israel's high priest stood between God and the people. He entered the tabernacle, the priest did, or the temple to offer gifts and sacrifices on their behalf to make atonement for sin. He was a go-between, he was the mediator, but also the high priest himself was human and had the same weakness of sin. So he could deal gently with those 
who were going astray since he himself was also a sinner. The sin offering he made was for his own sins as well as the people. That's why they said when the, when the high priest went behind the veil, they would, they would attach a rope to him because he was a sinner too. And, and uh, just in case he fainted or passed out or even died, they couldn't go back there. But they, they could pull him out. So see, since he himself was a sinner, he had to atone for himself. The person selected to be a priest didn't apply for the job. You did not just get up and jump into the position as priest. This person had to be called by God. Oh, I, 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 I shudder those who just started preaching because mama told me I should preach. And if God didn't tell you to do something, don't do it. Nobody can declare you a preacher. God has to call you to this position. Just as Aaron was in the Old Testament, Jesus... Ah, I like that name. Somebody just call that name Jesus. Jesus was appointed by God just like he called the priest in the Old Testament. Jesus was appointed by God the Father to, to take the role of the perfect and complete high priest. Let's go back to Hebrews 5. It says, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have companion, or I'm sorry, he can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ. So also Christ. Come on, say so also Christ. Did not glorify himself to become high priest but it was he who said to him you are my son today I have begotten you as he also says in another place you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek come on say amen, amen. now you say Jesus was not a priest according after Aaron. He was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Are you all with me? Am I boring you all? Okay, I haven't preached in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a month, so I'm going to preach Jesus today. Uh, he is a priest after Melchizedek. Well, who was Melchizedek? Okay, according to Genesis 14 and 17 through 24. He is mentioned briefly also in Psalms 110 and 4. Uh, and that's all you hear in the Old Testament about Melchizedek. Uh, Genesis the 14th chapter and then uh, Psalms 110 and 4. However, in Hebrew or in the Hebrew uh, culture history, Melchizedek becomes an important person in the Bible. He was king of Salem and priest of God most high. That is of the God who overrules every other power. When Abraham experienced God's provision and deliverance in a battle with several kings, Melchizedek met Abraham and blessed him. You can go to Genesis chapter 7 and 1. 
he also renewed Abraham's strength with bread and wine. In response, Abraham honored this priest king with paying him a tithe. Those of you who think tithe came with the law, this is 400 years before the law. And Abraham paid Melchizedek a tenth of all he had. The author tells us that Melchizedek's name means king of righteousness and king of peace. Salem means peace. Who comes to mind when you consider titles? Uh, 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 moreover, the Old Testament doesn't mention his beginning or end. Of course, the author of Hebrews isn't saying that he literally had no parents. What they're saying is there is no record of his birth. So he remains a priest forever. And the point is that Melchizedek was a prototype of Jesus. Because the true king of righteousness and the true king of peace was Jesus. Say amen. As the divine son of God, Jesus had no beginning of days. And as the resurrected Lord, he had no end. So like Melchizedek, Jesus is both king and priest. Say hallelujah. Such a dual role was unheard of in Israel, where the office of priest and king were intentionally distinct. The Levitical priest didn't rule and the king didn't perform priestly duties. Nevertheless, reassembling the son of God, Melchizedek, is an Old Testament illustration of what Jesus would be like. So Jesus was both king and priest. Come on, say hallelujah. So like the priesthood of Melchizedek, he brings blessings and renews the spiritual strength of his people with the bread and wine of communion so that we can live in spiritual victory. So just like Melchizedek gave Abraham uh, bread and wine after that battle, we remember Jesus as a symbolic that Jesus gives us strength. He is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. Come on, say Jesus is the bread of life. So when I'm getting weak, Jesus feeds me strength. That song says, you are my strength, strength like no other. Come on, say hallelujah. Let me cut corners here. So Melchizedek was a priest. Abraham paid him tithe. Jesus was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. He was not in the Levitical priesthood of Aaron. He was a priest after Melchizedek. So in a sense, uh, the Levite also paid tithes to Melchizedek because he was still within the ancestor of Abraham. So let me get on furthermore. Let me get on to... Uh, what my main point, um, and I think we've, we've told you that Jesus is a continuation of the Melchizedekian priesthood. And that is a legitimate priesthood. So the book, of, the book of Hebrews compares Jesus to Melchizedek to show that Jesus is superior to the old Jewish priesthood. Jesus is better than the Levitical priesthood. He is the only priest who did no sin. He was the only priest who did no sin. He was tempted in all points, yet he did no sin. So that means Jesus did not have a weakness. The Bible says that he became sin for us. Now, now I, I, just, I just get excited. You all should be rejoicing at that. He, he did no sin. 
This is communion. Can I preach Jesus? He did no sin, yet he became sin. Are y'all still not rejoicing? He, he did nothing wrong, but he became all of our wrong. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, and I love this verse, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He became what he never was for us to become what we never was. We were not righteous, he was. And he became sin which we were so we could become righteousness that he was. And in order to do that, he had to be both God and man. He, he, he did nothing wrong. He died and did nothing wrong. There was no thought found in him. Pilate didn't even have a reason. Pilate said, I wash my hands. What, what has he done? He did nothing. But he became wrong for us. Somebody say hallelujah. Uh, I, I, just, I just get excited. And, and, and communion takes on a, a different meaning now. Be, because Jesus didn't have to come. God could have sent us all to hell. That was his right. Adam and Eve messed up all of us. But Jesus said, prepare me a body. I'll go down to man and become a man. And although I'll never do wrong, so God, who does not know what it's like to sin, God does not know what it's like to sin. God has never sinned. He sent Jesus who doesn't know what it's like to sin. But when he got on the cross, he became sin. That, that, that's the foundation of every message you preach. We preach Christ and him crucified because he is the reason why we are sitting here today. He is the reason that, why we are called the righteousness of God. I don't have time to go down to every list and I don't have time to go down your sin and my sin but it's kind of like this. He became lying to save the liar. He became drunkenness to save the drunk. He became stealing to save the thief. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. Don't look at me like I'm reading the Bible. He became your sin to save you. I'm not good enough. If, if y'all knew what I did, Jesus said, I became what you are not good enough. He became fornication to save the fornicator. And it says that we have a high priest who ain't in there because he sinned. <laughs> but in all points tested. Y'all don't know what I'm going through. Jesus said in all points tested. Just as we are. So, so a lot of times you win stuff because you want to be in it. OK? 
and don't even go down that road. You ain't saying because you want to be there because the Bible says you don't have to live that way. It's hard. Jesus said a, a nail was harder. <laughs> it's hard. Jesus said a, 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 a crown of thorns was harder. It's hard. Y'all don't know. Jesus said being pierced in the side for doing nothing is harder. And I took all of that on me to rescue you. I got to close. He was successful in overcoming everything. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 4, our text, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us stay there and confess Jesus. Let us be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because of the high priest. Don't give up. Don't give in. Tell somebody, don't give up. Don't give in. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin did you all hear that come on say all points tempted in other words you when you go to your secret closet don't don't say it in front of me put put that put that struggle before him put put that issue before him Put that financial issue before him. Put that marital problem before him. Put that habit before him. All points tempted, every area, every issue, yet he did not sin. He did not give in to the pressure. Tell your neighbor, don't give in to the pressure. Jesus didn't say temptation won't come, but he said you don't have to give in to the temptation. Come on, say hello. Come on, say hello. Jesus is a help in the time of need. Jesus is a help. He is not justification, but help. See, see justification can be misleading. Because justification is a legal term. And, and, and you could be saved positionally, but still out of the will of the Lord because you have not given and yielded your mind and body to him. So you're no good to be a witness because you have not yielded. That's why deliverance is so important. That's why the old folks didn't say deliverance. They would just say stay at the altar. Just, just stay there. God is not through with you yet. Oh, I've got to close this. I've got to close. Come on, say thank God for Jesus. So because he was our priest, high priest, because he was in all points tempted, because I want to leave a word with you, and this word has been in my mind all week long and I wanted to make a message of it. I just didn't get a I didn't get a uh, uh, just I didn't really feel right doing a message out of it but I'm, I'm going to close with this word come on say confidence that, that word has been just, just, just resonating confidence in other words God is saying you got to have some confidence now, I know faith is spiritual, and, and, and faith, faith speaks to the soul that trusts God in his word. But, but confidence can be manifested in your flesh and in your emotions and in your speech. Hear me, church. The Lord want me to tell you this. 
And, 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 and God is saying that because of what Christ did, hold your head up and have some confidence. Because of what Christ did and, 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 and the change he has broken, confidence is very important. Now, it says, Hebrews 4 and 16, as I close, let us therefore come boldly, you all see that, to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Do you know what that word boldly means? It says, come with confidence. Because of what Jesus did and who he is, you can come to him with Confidence. Come on, shout that word confidence. confidence. Have some confidence when you say the word confidence. Come on, come on, just say confidence. confidence. Now, I looked that word up because you got to know what it means. It, it comes uh, from that word uh, in the Greek, parousia. Parousia. And, and that means boldness. That means to speak without concealment y'all hear that that means to speak with assurance it, it is a boldness so because of Christ we can face life with boldness you ever, you ever, you ever had that confident walk <laughs> uh, that you know everything was alright you ain't got your head down and the wind blow and blow you over. And, oh, we'll never make it. I know we won't. Oh, let me go down to Gulliver. That was my, one of my favorite uh, cartoons as a boy. And I remember, I say this all the time, I, I could not understand that cartoon, uh, Gulliver's, and, and this one little uh, guy, everybody be running. They'd be running for safety. And as he runs, he said, we'll never make it. I know we won't. We're doomed. I, I, I could, I, he would just fascinate me because he would always get out of trouble, but his mindset was always, we'll never, we got some saints, we'll never make it. I ain't going to get out of this. And, 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 and the Bible speaks about confidence. And you got saints saying, you know, I don't know how we're going to make it. I want to know how we're going to make it. Confidence. Let us therefore come boldly. In other words, you know, you got you to gotta walk like George Jefferson. Y'all know George Jefferson on the Jefferson? Yeah, we're moving on up. You know, yeah, he had that walk. He had that walk, you know. Call that walk, hey, we, in other words, he was short, but he was confident that he was the man. And, and, and with Christ, you're the woman, you're the man. Come on, say, I'm the man, I'm the woman with Christ. Oh, you need some Bible? Oh, I like this. Uh, th this, this scripture just slapped me in the face. Hebrews 10 and 35 and 36, it, it just, uh, therefore, let's read that. Do not cast away your what? Which has what? Now, now listen how it's read. Do not cast away your, comp in other words, cast, that means toss it. So in other words, God has given you the confidence and then when you get in trouble, you throw it aside. But it says, do not cast away your confidence, which has what? Tell your neighbor, there's a reward coming from your confidence. Oh, I, I, I'm enjoying this. I, I don't know because... I, I, I need millions, <laughs> so I, I'm beyond that. I'm behind that two hundred and fifty dollar prayer. I'm beyond that. I'm, I'm beyond that now. I, from what I ask, I'm always. I told the Lord, I'm always asking of you something. I'm always asking God for something I can't afford. <laughs> I'm always asking God for something that's beyond me. 
But don't the Bible say it now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all? Am I in the book? Look, I'm always asking God when I tell people they look at me and laugh. And, but, I, but, I, but, but I need, so, so I need some confidence. And it says, don't cast it away, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may, re in other words, let, let me explain what he's saying here. God has given you confidence through Jesus Christ. You cannot or you should not throw it away or cast it aside because of some present circumstance. Your perseverance and your steadfastness has great reward. It says, that the writer says, if you don't cast it away, there's a reward coming. And while you are waiting, while I'm waiting on the reward and the promise, God says, you need some patience. Because it's coming, but, but I don't want you to get discouraged. So, so, so you need some patience because uh, the reward is coming and the promise. Come on, say the reward is coming. But, but what's going on here, listen at this. God is working his will in you. God is making you into something that he wants you to be. It is his will for your life. Then you will see the manifestation of his promises in your life. In other words, God is saying, you ain't ready to get it yet. Wait. But while you're waiting, uh, you, you, you need some patience. And you need some endurance. And, and you need some, some endurance that's, wanna, that's gonna have you praising God and, and worshiping Him until something happens. And God, uh, uh, you might think you're just struggling, and God is making sure you know you're still, you still, you still above water. But after His will and His way, gets in you, then God said, you're ready to receive the promise. Y'all see that there? Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Come on, clap your hands and praise God for that. If you don't get anything from this message, God did all of that. He became my high priest so that I could have confidence. He did all that for me because he lives in me. I can look the devil in the eye. I can look circumstances and rebuke cancer. I can rebuke sickness. I can lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover and that's my confidence. And when you think, <laughs> I still got some work to do, Philippians 1 and 6 slaps you in the face and saying, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, what? will complete it until the day I'm confident that he's not through with me. Come on, say, I'm confident that he's not through with me. Come on, confidence. I, I got my confidence. Come on, come on. What, what does Marvin, Marvin Winding say? Hold your head up, square your shoulders. Marvin Winer said in some of his songs, hold your head up, square. come on, say, come on, hold your head up and square those shoulders and say, I'm confident of this one thing. I may not be what I want to be, but God is not through 
with me yet. That word confidence has been in me all week. I, I wanted to, I was trying to make a message, the confidence of the believer. I couldn't get a sanction on it, but I've got to, I've got to just release this. The Lord is saying you got to be confident because of what Jesus did. He was our high priest. You can come boldly to him. Everybody's standing. Maybe I can't give this like I wanted to. But you got to have some confidence. Cast, don't cast away your confidence. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance. He's telling those Jewish people, you came to Christ and you accepted him and there was a love for Christ. Now things are getting bad. You're being persecuted. You want to throw your confidence away and go back. And he's saying, no, no, no. Just like Ariane said, he said, Ariane said, I think she said, all the years of having an easy life, and then one year you're going to give up on God. That's, that's the time to, to remember what he has done for you and what he can do. That's why the endurance and the patience is needed. Confidence. And in my prayer this week, I begin praying with confidence. I've been praying with, now, now let me, let me, let me uh, put this before we pray. There's a difference between faith and confidence. I know we pray in faith, but confidence literally has a demeanor. I was, I was at dog training, getting the dog trained, and the trainer said something key, and I found it to work. The, the, the trainer said, dogs really don't respond to word, they respond to body language. So it's like, when you say something, so she was like teaching her how to stay, you gotta say stay and you have to stand up like this. Because if you do this, she'll come. So when you say stay, don't do this, you're gonna confuse her. So you say stay and keep your head up and look at her firmly. And when I began, my body language changed and I would say, mama stay, and I would do that. And I would go back. And she would, and I would say, okay, come. When I would do this, she would come. She said, dogs, look at body language. That, that you're, how, how are you? And, and when it says uh, confidence, boldness, it is a tone in that voice that I'm praying in faith, but I can't pray timid in faith. Praying safe prayer, Lord, if it be your will. I know you've done it before, but you've got to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring your word. Your word says this, and I'm standing on that. And you let the, don't let the devil see you uh, squirming in your voice. You know, in the book of Acts, with that man, I, I cast you out in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. The devil said, what? <laughs> the devil looked at the demon and said, oh, we got one here, guys. <laughs> What'd you say? In the name of Jesus, whom Paul, in other words, you don't even know who Jesus is. <laughs> you just heard somebody saying it. And in other words, you've got to say with boldness, in the name of Jesus, who is my Savior, who lives inside of me, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's boldness. So Lord was showing me when it says cast not away your confidence, it ain't talking about faith. It's talking about your demeanor and how you express what you want God to do. Do you really have confidence that what I say he's going to do it? 
And confident people talk different, walk different, look different. A girl don't want no wimpy man. Unless she's a Je Jezebel and she want an Ahab. But a real woman wants somebody who can say no, yes, I got this. Did it get quiet on me? You got to feel safe. Come to the altar, confident people, or if you're praying, God, I, I, the confidence, I want that confidence. Come to the altar. I'm, I'm, I'm believing God for something. Come to the 